morning, everybody. So, dear friends, this morning is second Sunday of Easter. And second Sunday of Easter usually is celebrated as Divine Mercy Sunday. We pray today for God's mercies and forgiveness and love. Not just over us, but over the whole of humanity. We pray for God's forgiveness and strength and direction so that all of us will live lives worthy of our call as members of God's family. Let us now arise and continue with our celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us call to mind our sins. He was sent to hear the contrite of hearts, Lord have mercy. You plead for us at God's right hand, Christ have mercy. You will come again to lead us home, Lord have mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been baptized, and in whose spirit they were reborn, and by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind. 
and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is Christ and begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father, loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. Yeah. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them. And whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, we have seen the Lord, but he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into the side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And that through this belief, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of Salvation. everybody. So today is our Easter fiesta and after the mass you are invited with the keys for our celebration. It's a lot of food to eat and a lot to drink. I think there's drinks for adults also, I hope. Okay, so today we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday and next year, I'm going to give the reflection on what divine, why Divine Sunday, Divine Mercy Sunday means. I will spend time talking about Sister Faustina, 
The sister who in 1930 started having visions and apparitions about divine mercy. And I'll try to explain what that devotion is all about. But for this year and today, I just want to give a brief reflection based on our gospel passage. So our gospel story today talks about the appearance of Jesus after his resurrection to his apostles. And how Thomas was not there when he first came. And when he came back and was told by his colleagues or his friends, he wouldn't accept. I remember many years ago there was this baptism we had for kids and I was going to name one little kid there, uh, Thomas, for baptism, and the father wouldn't accept that name. They said to him, why not? He said, because Thomas never believed in Jesus, so I don't want my son to be unbelieving. He wouldn't allow me to baptize his son with the name Thomas. And I think over the years, a lot of folks have thought Thomas never really had faith in Jesus or something. So I just want to clear that fact today by reminding all of us that all the apostles had difficulties accepting the fact of the resurrection. All of them, not just Thomas. I want to read a text from Mark's Gospel, chapter 16. I'm reading verse 9 through 15. And I invite you to do the reading at home for your reflection when you go home. When Jesus had risen early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven out seven demons. She went and told his companions, who were mourning and weeping, that she had seen the Lord. But they did not believe her. After this, Jesus appeared in another form to two of them walking along on their way to the country. They returned and told the others, but they did not believe them either. But later, as the eleven were at table, he appeared to them and rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they had not believed those who saw him after he had been raised. That text is taken from Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 9 through 15. The trust of that text is that all the apostles had doubts. In fact, most of them had difficulties. All of them had difficulties accepting that Jesus had risen. Even though Jesus had told them beforehand that he was going to suffer and die, but will rise on the third day, they still had difficulties coming to terms with the fact of life after death. So don't blame just Thomas. All the apostles had difficulties accepting this reality. Now, what lesson is this to you and me? What can we take home in our celebration? I think like Thomas and the other apostles, very often were filled with uncertainties, even lack of faith in God, in Jesus, Sometimes even lack of faith in ourselves, in our abilities, in our capacity to do anything. Sometimes we don't even believe there is a life hereafter. We experience these doubts. So I think today Jesus invites us, like Thomas, to come closer to him to feel his presence in our lives, 
to believe that he is our Lord and God always. So today as you receive the blessed sacrament, you receive Jesus in the blessed sacrament in the Eucharist, talk to Jesus. Let him, st let him strengthen your faith and belief and trust in his presence. Because he is always present. He is Emmanuel, he is God with us. So it does not matter the ups and downs of our lives, the seeming absence of divine presence sometimes, it does not matter. Jesus is still present in our everyday life situations. That is the lesson we take home. Secondly, we see also today in our celebration the institution of the sacrament of reconciliation. Jesus breathed on the apostles and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them. And whose sins you retain are retained. Many of us have problems with the sacrament of reconciliation, penance as we celebrate it. We have difficulties accepting it as a sacrament sometimes. We have no problem with the initiation sacraments, baptism, confirmation, the Eucharist. We have no problem with inviting the priest to come for anointing when we have sick loved ones. We have no problem with holy others. We have no problem with the priest assisting at marriages or being witnesses at the solemnization of our marriages. But when it comes to individual confessions, sometimes some of us have problems. We say, well, why don't I wake up at 12 midnight and talk to God straight and have my sins forgiven? Why do I need to meet the priest in the confessional? The priest remains the, sacrament, the, the, the minister in this sacrament. He remains the bridge on which we pass to reach the person of Christ. Don't have problems with individual confessions. Don't have problems with sacramental penance because it is good. It is rewarding. It nourishes and strengthens us with God's graces and above all fortifies the intercessory role or the mediatory role the priest plays in bringing us, with, uh, in, uh, bringing us before God in our reconciliation. So today more than ever before we are reminded that we should be happy that Jesus has left us with this sacrament in our church. Let us accept it. Let us celebrate it. Let us see that it cleanses and purifies and reconciles us in our weaknesses, in our relationship with God. Finally, St. John says something here that is very important. He tells us that we cannot find everything about the life of Christ in the scriptures. So, many times we see people ask, Oh, where, Father, where is it in the Bible? Oh, I can't see that in the scriptures. So why are we doing that? Remember, the scripture is a product of the believing community. The believing community gave us the scriptures. So we must do with the teaching authority of the church and that is the magisterium of the church and the tradition of the church. In addition with the scriptures to make sense of our faith. So don't be, don't be carried away by people when they bring very nice argument and tell you, oh, this is not in the Bible, so why is it being done? Who gave us the Bible? The church. So Johnson John reminds us that there's a lot 
that hasn't been put in there, but just a selection, a compilation of a few things about the life and public ministry of Jesus. Just to strengthen our faith in him. So yes, scripture is important, but so also is the magisterium, the teaching authority of the church, and the traditions of the church. Together, they make us our faith much more meaningful. They help our growth and in our relationship with our Creator, God, and our Savior, Jesus. So we pray today on this day of Divine Mercy Sunday that God will strengthen our faith in belief, in believing in Him, and in belief in the fact of the resurrection of Christ our Savior, knowing that someday we too be raised in our mortal bodies to experience the kingdom, his eternal kingdom that awaits us all. Let us stand now and profess our faith in God. I believe in one God. things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, that look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear friends, on the day we celebrate the divine mercy of God over humanity, let us now turn to him, trusting that he will hear us, trusting that he will answer our needs. Our response is, Jesus is risen, alleluia. Jesus is risen, alleluia. Kindle in us the fire of your spirit and help us to show compassion to all we meet, we pray. Jesus, hallelujah. May this Easter season find us filled with you and a desire to share it with others, we pray. Jesus, hallelujah. Inspire us to help those in need or those struggling with difficulties, we pray. Jesus, hallelujah. We remember those who are ill, Ted Fleck, Derek Kasprich, and for all those who care for them, we pray. Jesus, hallelujah. We remember those who have died. And for those who mourn, we pray. Jesus, hallelujah. Merciful Father, listen favorably to our prayers because we have made them through our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hi, I'm Norma Cable. Thank you for watching this week's Liturgy of the Word. We invite you to join us in one of our weekend Masses. All are welcome. 
If you're unable to attend Mass and want to receive the Eucharist, please contact our parish office for a homebound visit from our deacon or one of our lay ministers. God bless you, and we hope to see you soon.